Dear Prime Minister, a lot has happened since last Valentine's Day. To the pitch. I'm doing this for my son. <laughs> So my name's Ellie Waters and I live down in Cornwall on an off-grid small holding where I also run a natural burial site. My activism has changed over the years. My involvement with Extinction Rebellion in the earlier days led to a number of arrests and really being upfront and really wanting to make a stand and really wanting to be heard and be seen and actually I didn't feel that worked. I felt like I was part of creating more separation than I was about bringing people together, which is what was starting to feel increasingly important to me. My daily life consists of working with the land and working in community. So one of the little actions that I did um, last year was I took a big blackboard into our local town and on it it said, um, how are you actually feeling about the climate and ecological emergency? And people just came down and sat and talk to me about how they were feeling. So encouraging people to connect with their hearts and I do that on a, on a daily basis through the burial site that I run. Unless we can learn to face into our own death and our own personal griefs, we are not really in a position to be able to open our hearts to what's going on with the climate crisis. I'm aware of my privilege in how we've been able to live our lives up until this point. I love what we do and there's so much more to be done. Before joining Just Stop Oil, I have tried every other non-disruptive form of protest possible. I've written more letters to MPs than I can count, I've been to so many marches, and I've learned the hard way that placards and petitions are too easily ignored. Shutting down the M25 can't be. Throwing soup on a painting can't be. I'm Phoebe Plummer, I'm 21, and I'm a social anthropology student in London and a supporter of Just Stop Oil. Just Stop Oil has one simple, no-brainer demand that the government makes a statement that they will immediately halt all new fossil fuel licensing. And we have secondary demands that they insulate British homes and that they provide cheap and accessible public transportation. The action today, sending that letter to the government, was about inviting them to act on the science. Internationally respected bodies are, are asking for the same thing for an end to new fossil fuels. Just Stop Oil will continue its campaign and escalate its actions until they do listen. I've seen a lot of different forms of protest over the last few years and I actually feel they're all valid. People making it personal to them and making their activism fit who they are and what message they're wanting to put across means that it, it's all got a place. I think it has got to the point where we need to be using shock tactics along with, with all the softer options. You know, anything that helps people to feel something, I feel is useful. Just Stop Oil has proved that their tactics are effective. All major political parties, other than the zombie Tories, have adopted our demand. We've seen major banks um, agreeing to no longer invest in new fossil fuel projects. And history is rich with examples of civil resistance being the best hope we have of getting this radical change we need. There's the suffragettes, the queer rights movement, civil rights, all of these groups had to take non-violent direct action to get the radical change they needed. I was sent to prison last year, I spent 28 days on remand. I risk going back with three Crown Court cases against me. I think it would be naive to say that I'm not scared about that but the fear of inaction is so much greater. Climate activism can definitely take you to dark places. You're facing into grief. That is a really powerful place to go and a really powerful place to be, but you need to, to be supported in that. Connecting with the climate crisis is emotionally charged. I'm terrified that I'm set to live the worst realities of climate breakdown, and I'm furious that this is the future that governments are signing me and my generation up for. But being a part of Just Stop Oil gives me hope as well. I'm not powerless and that we can create change. So as far as I see it, we have two choices. We have the choice of mass extinction or we have the choice of mass participation. We are fighting for our lives. How could we stop?